Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Spitting Venom, aka the Venom Vlog. This is episode 293, and I, you know what? I wasn't sure I was going to do this episode, but I figured, why not? I'm here. I'm recording. It might, you know, give me a couple things to talk about for you guys, uh, and you know, fill in the time between now and this weekend when I'll have more time to make videos. So I figured, let's just knock this one out because it looked really cool, and it gives us a lot of information about a character that is going to be in the next Venom movie, as long as you know it keeps making money and it gets a sequel, which I'm hoping Sony will announce soon. But I'm sure they're going to wait either for another week to see. With the box office drop is on the second weekend or they might wait till the china release and see how much money it makes in china uh, but either way you know this is gives me hope because a lot of this is very comic accurate uh, which i love we saw when the first image of eddie brock and by the way this will contain spoilers so uh, you know if you haven't seen the movie yet definitely turn away now uh, but that's my last warning because I want to get right into this. Uh, you saw in the first time when they released the picture of Eddie Brock, the first official image of the movie, it had him holding a you know a notepad, and that was from his interview with Carlton Drake, and it had questions in there that you know gave us all hints at the plot of the movie. So they're doing that again. They put at New York Comic Con, they had some props from the Venom movie displayed there at New York Comic Con, and one of the things they had was Eddie Brock's notebook, and it was opened up to the last pages where he was interviewing Cletus Cassidy. So these are all the questions he was going to ask Cletus when he had his little notebook that he was, you know, sitting there talking to him with. And so in here we see a lot of stuff. He has a lot of information about Cletus that comes right out of the comic books. Uh, so obviously his current state is in San Quentin. They mentioned that. Um, he's killed his grandmother by pushing her down a flight of stairs. 100% from the comic books. We learned that, I believe we learned that, in uh, Maximum Carnage. I think that was the story they first revealed that in. Uh, also, that's when they revealed he grew up in an orphanage after that, which is also mentioned here, uh, St. Estes Home for Boys, uh, and that is where he kind of grew up. And there was a fire there some years later, and uh, no one had any suspects. They thought it was just like a random act, but it could also, Eddie here has a theory that maybe he could have been the one to set the fire and burn down the orphanage. Because in Maximum Carnage, he goes back to that orphanage and he writes like Carnage is here in blood for when Spider-Man and Venom show up. Uh, and then he's there and he's holding like the teddy bear. Um, it's a really creepy scene. And uh, if they translate that to the movie, it's going to be really dark. So uh, I don't know if they're going to be able to pull off PG-13 with the second time uh, out with Venom. That's The sequel may end up being R. I don't know. I mean, you could do this in a PG-13 setting. It wasn't a random, or not a random, but it wasn't a Spider-Man comic that was rated teen at the time, so I'm sure, and it fit the comics code. It wasn't too gruesome for it, so you know it could still be PG-13, but it is some dark stuff when you think about it. Uh, then it says here uh, he went on to a huge massacre in New York City, uh, and then 11 more murders in Rikers alone. So other uh, you know inmates that he was with at, at certain times, he also killed. Um, but obviously he's at San Quentin now, so he was transferred from New York. It shows that he's from New York. Uh, it shows that one time he dug up his mother's grave after a massacre that he committed. Um, so obviously really a gross guy. Um, yeah, yeah, just uh, he has an Oedipus complex, it says here. Um, it's it's some gross stuff. Uh, this guy is really twisted. He's born in Brooklyn, New York. All this is comic accurate. Um, he has an insane mind and lust for destruction. Homicidal maniac is, is how he uh, how Eddie Brock uh, classifies him. Um, but then he asks here, he's, he, as a child, he grew up in St. Esther's. Did Cletus set the fire at St. Esther's, uh, St. Estes? Um, it, uh, then also he put in here, it killed the uh, disciplinary administration. Was that revenge? So uh, again, you know, uh, Eddie trying to piece together some things, trying to ask some questions, trying to for, find if there's more bodies out there that were uh, killed by at the hands of Cletus Cassidy, which is what he says in the movie. The FBI wants him to see if he can help reveal any new evidence and uh, any new bodies that haven't been discovered before uh, so that those families can, you know, get closure or find, you know, some kind of closure. So, uh, yeah, there's just a lot of cool stuff. Um, and then it says also here, unpatterned bloodshed, uh, the ultimate freedom. So he also, you know, c c cutting himself and uh, spelling things out in blood. You know, he's got, a, you know, a way of, a way of uh, uh, you know, uh, talking to people, I guess. You saw he wrote, welcome Eddie in his own blood uh, in the cell. So, uh, yeah. So what else it says here? Pushed a girl who would not go out with him in front of a bus. Uh, she was killed instantly. Wow. <laughs> okay. So uh, again, this notebook uh, tells a lot and it shows the very violent nature of Cletus Cassidy and gives me maybe a little bit of hope that they'll actually have a villain worth um, 
you know, obviously they have a great actor playing the villain in the next movie too. And I thought they had good actors in this movie, but I just wasn't really feeling Carlton Drake or, or Riot in general. So it'll be really neat to see how they portray Carnage, uh, especially with an actor who I really like in uh, Woody Harrelson. That last scene kind of made me go, uh, I'm not so sure, but I think with a whole movie to flesh him out, he could really convince me and turn me around uh, 100% on him. Because right now I kind of uh, dipped a few points on him after seeing that post credit scene. But I feel like, you know, he's a good enough actor. Him and Tom Hardy playing off each other it sounds like a really good and scary and fun time, uh, in my opinion. So you guys let me know. I'll put a link to the comicbook.com website that posted this from New York. I'll put a link to it down below. You can check it out there. What do you think of all this? Uh, you know, does it give you hope for the second one? If you weren't a big fan of the first movie, but does this make you feel better about a potential sequel? I'd love to hear all your thoughts down below. Thanks for watching my show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace.